Valerie Alice Capillaire was born in 1986 and she grew up in Howard County, Maryland. Uh, um, this is Val with her sisters. She was the middle daughter of the Capillaire family. And here she is with her sisters while she was in high school. So when, uh, when Val was in middle school, uh, she was teased for being overweight and wearing glasses. And you can see her here. This is a picture of her wearing her glasses and braces on her braces on her teeth. Um, but Val decided to do something. So she began running in her neighborhood, in our neighborhood. And she started training with the soccer coach and she grew taller and lost weight. And by the time uh, she was a freshman, her freshman year of high school, she made the varsity soccer team. And this is an example of her motto, adapt and overcome. Val didn't like being teased, so she worked hard to change things. So Val was a good student in school. She challenged herself by taking the most difficult classes she could, um, advanced placement and honors classes. She knew she wanted to study engineering in college, so she searched for the best university to attend. The summer before her senior year, she attended a week of camp at the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis and decided that's where she wanted to go. In order to go there, she was required to have a nomination from a congressman or a senator. Even though Val was nominated by our congressman pictured here in the middle, uh, Elijah Cummings, she was not accepted that first year uh, that she applied to go to the Naval Academy, but she was offered a year of prep school, which, is, which was another year of high school, and she decided to go for it. So the following year, she was accepted to the Naval Academy. And this is another example of her motto, adapt and overcome. If you first, if at first you don't succeed, try again. And this shows perseverance. So this is Val with some of her classmates at the Naval Academy. And this was her first year, which they call plebe year. And that's the uniforms they had to wear. And then this is Val with her whole class. You can see her in the front there. They're, uh, they're taught to have a very um, straight stare, uh, not move their eyes. Their, their fists are down by their sides. And then the picture up in the corner is her whole class in formation in front of Bancroft Hall, which is the big dormitory where all the midshipmen live while they go to the Naval Academy. So Val chose the most difficult subject to study at the Naval Academy, which is aerospace engineering. And there she is in her uh, uniform there. Elle also took on leadership positions at the Naval Academy. So here she is 
leading a new group of plebes. And Val also ran a marathon while she was a midshipman. How many, how many miles is a marathon? Anyone know? 26.2 miles. And Val ran it in under four hours. Oh, wow. Val also played lacrosse at the Naval Academy. She was not the best player on the team, but she enthusiastically supported her teammates and served as the heart of her team, even from the bench sometimes. Val adapted to the life, to life at the Naval Academy and thrived. In 2009, she graduated with a degree in aerospace engineering and was chosen to become a naval aviator. And there pictured in the top left is then President Obama giving Val her diploma at their commencement. So that was just the beginning of much more training. Here she is in Corpus Christi, Texas, after her first solo flight in a military aircraft, the Beechcraft T-34C Turbo Mentor. So Val did extremely well in her first phase of flight training and she was chosen to fly jets. Here she is wearing a G suit. And uh, that's what you have to wear to fly jets because you pull forces that, uh, that put pressure on your body. So this suit helps, helps you uh, live in an environment like that. And um, this is the picture of the jet she learned to fly in the McDonnell Douglas T-45 Goshawk. And um, in, order, in order for Val to become a Navy pilot, she had to land this aircraft on an aircraft carrier, which is a huge ship in the sea. But guess what? That first time, that first time Val, the first time she tried her aircraft landings, they told her she didn't do them well enough to, to qualify. She was very sad and frustrated, but she didn't give up. She practiced more flights and her second time around, she was qualified in aircraft carrier landings. This is another example of her motto, adapt and overcome. Val earned her wings of gold on February 17th, 2012, and she became a real Navy pilot. So those are the, the, the gold wings that Naval aviators earn. And that was one of her commanding officers pin, pinning the wing on her uniform. The Navy assigned her to Whidbey Island Naval Air Station in Washington State where she was to learn how to fly the EA-6B Prowler. And that's the Prowler patch that she got for her flight suit. These are some actual photos of Val flying in formation in the Prowler. She trained in this aircraft and became an aircraft commander, but then something devastating happened. Val was flying on a low level training mission out of Whidbey Island Naval Air Station when something happened with her aircraft. It crashed and exploded 
and she and her two crew members were instantly killed. On March 11th, 2013, eight years ago, Val made the ultimate sacrifice at the age of 26 years old. Val was killed in the line of duty. However, something amazing happened at her funeral at Arlington National Cemetery. Her sister aviators presented her family with two long jump straps full of nearly 200 sets of wings, pilot wings from female aviators from all over the world. This collection of wings is now on display at the Women's Memorial at Arlington National Cemetery and more wings get added each year. It's incredible. If you ever get a chance to visit, you, sh you should really try. Val's family and friends were very sad at losing our beloved daughter and sister. So we thought of a way to carry on Val's incredible legacy. We created the Wings for Val Foundation with the mission to support women in aviation and inspire future generations of leaders and we adapted and overcame. So every year, the Wings for Val Foundation gives scholarships to young women who want to become pilots. These are some of the women who have earned scholarships. To date, we have given 25 scholarships and over $87,000 paid directly to flight schools on behalf of the scholarship winners. And these women have used the funds to become licensed pilots and live their dreams. There aren't too many female uh, pilots, is that correct? I mean, I don't know the that, specific- That is correct. Um, uh, in uh, commercial aviation, there are only 7% uh, women pilots. Wow. And in the military, it's even less. It's only 4%. Wow. Sorry, okay, uh, students, do you guys have any questions? Or Mrs. Capillaire, I'm sorry I pronounced it wrong, Capillaire. That's okay. I'm sorry that you lost your daughter. Say that um, again? I'm sorry that you lost your daughter in a plane crash. Oh, yeah. It's the it's the worst. It's the worst thing. But we've tried to um, we've tried to honor honor her hard work and her life mission by doing something good and paying forward. Um, my uh, we have a student. He says, "At what age did she become a pilot?" Okay, she became a pilot. Um, she got her private pilot's license while she was studying at the Naval Academy. She was probably about 20 years old. And she flew um, in a little commercial uh, Cessna, like um, two-seater plane. She did a um, solo flight from Annapolis Maryland to Cape May, New Jersey and back. That was her first solo flight in a plane. We have another uh, couple here. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, of all the activities she has done, uh, what was her favorite and why? Uh, I would say um, probably Val loved, um, she loved playing sports. Um, she, she loved being part of a team and um, she would uh, look up to the better players for, um, for help. And she would also mentor the players who were not as good as, you know, were not as good and tried to help them too. And I think that's kind of how she was in her life. Um, even during flight training, she reached out to uh, older women who had gone before her 
uh, to, to, for mentorship, but then she was always sure to reach behind those uh, coming up after her and offer them help. Uh, we have a couple comments. Um, mm -hmm. um, she was so brave and very admirable. Uh, she was so beautiful and very inspirational. And then another, um, uh, another said, this story is very touching. I'm sorry for your loss. Here's my question. Do you know what made her choose to be a pilot? Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, Val's uh, grandfather, my father was an air force pilot and um, he flew uh, B-17 bombers in World War II. When Val was um, in high school, we called him Grandpa Colonel. So when Val was in high school, Grandpa Colonel got very sick and was moved to a nursing home very close to where we live. So Val would spend like an hour, she would go to visit him after school, spend an hour with him and talk with him. And I think he told her about being in the military and being able to travel around the world and the different benefits you got for being in the military. And I think that sparked the interest that, um, that uh, incentivized Val to, to want to go to the Naval Academy and then fly. Uh, we got another comment. I could already, and it's, this is really powerful. I could already tell that Val was a sweet person. She left a huge impact. She even left one on me. You're a great mother that raised an inspiring young woman. Oh. Um, and a couple of these you've already kind of covered. Uh, oh, in an article I read about your daughter, I saw she liked to sing. Was this an extra hobby of hers? How did she, or did she do it for fun? And she says, I'm sorry for your loss. She's a strong woman and thank you for her service. So. Yes, Valerie did. Um, she was, uh, she was born. Uh, she had a, a beautiful uh, gifted uh, voice. And as a child, she sang in uh, church choirs and in school choirs and when she was in that one year of prep school after graduating for, from high school before she was able to go to the Naval Academy, her prep school was Northfield Mount Hermon in Massachusetts. And they had a, a, a female um, choir that was very renowned and she sang with them. And then when she got to the Naval Academy, she sang in the Women's Glee Club, and she also sang in a small a cappella group called the Stowaways. And uh, yeah, she okay. loved to sing. Um, I wanted to also touch on, we have, I saw Mr. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Tony Marshall popped in, uh, and uh, he was a f fighter pilot in Vietnam, and uh, he was shot down and captured he's actually from southern maryland oh. uh, and but i wanted also uh we have delia nava whose brother armando hernandez was in the iraq uh conflict and uh he was killed so i don't know delia if you want to say a couple words i'm going to call his picture up real quick about your brother um hello everybody um my brother he was in the army um, and he was killed in action in Iraq. Um, he was 22 years old. Um, he was my only brother and the only boy. Uh, he graduated from Hesperia High School in the year 2000. Um, he loved doing what he was, he loved doing what he was doing. He just, he was, he, he loved it. He loved, he loved being in the military. He made so many uh, friends. Um, he got to travel. Uh, he was stationed in Germany. So he traveled throughout Germany, through Spain. He got to see a lot of the world. 
Um, and it's been 17 years since he's been gone, but we still miss him every single day. And now I have two boys here. This one's Armando. Can you say hi, Armando? Hi. Say hi. <laughs> and this one is Anthony. Say hi. Can you say hi, Anthony? Hi. Hello. Oh, they're so cute. So now they're the only grandsons. My sister has um, two daughters. She just had two daughters. Um, and I have three older daughters. And then these were surprise miracle babies <laughs> that weren't planned. And I just, they just, I'm like, wow. wow. I'm like, okay. And like I said, I named him Armando. Um, and then we named him Anthony, but I didn't realize, I always called Dixon. Anthony Dixon and uh, my brother were killed in action on the same day. But I always called um, Anthony Dixon by his last name, Dixon. Mm. So to me, it didn't click. And I was worried that I said, well, you know, my sons are going to say, why did you name one? Why did you name me after a hero? Why didn't you name me after a hero? But now they're both named after heroes. Mm. Awesome. And, and I keep in contact with Anthony Dixon's mom. Um, and they were actually born on her birthday. Okay. So they were born on um, August 8th of 2019. Bye. 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 <laughs> Which was about a week after the um, after the anniversary date. It was 15 years 15 years after my brother passed away that they were born. There's wow. Anthony. And Anthony's from uh, New Jersey, I believe. Yes. Southern New yes. Jersey. Yes. Um, so, okay. So yes, now, yes. Uh, wow. Thank you so much. You used to come in all the time and yes. this whole COVID thing messed everything up, but I'm glad I to know. see you're doing good. Say hi to your girls and, and your mom I mean, too. I will. Um, thank you for speaking. And uh, I wanted to ask if uh, Mr. Marshall, if you're there, if you would like to say a few words. Well, oh, just uh, welcome to Veterans Day for everybody and uh, happy to be here. Um, you, you've been to our, um, our school a couple times, Mr. Marshall, and, uh, you know, our, our kids uh, made a movie about, <laughs> about yes, you and everything. Um, <laughs> could you just tell the kids kind of just in a couple sentences or so, you know, why did you go into the military and you know, what was it like for you to, you know, during the Vietnam War period? To be okay. A um, well, I went into the military because I was facing the draft and I didn't want to be drafted. So I decided to join the Air Force. And uh, at the academy, I got uh, to see what the war was about, decided that I wanted to go and participate and uh, went over, had a I had a pretty good time till I got shot down, obviously. But uh, it was a very rewarding tour, very interesting, the whole military experience. And uh, like most veterans, I wanted to do my part for the country. For Did you Vietnam, it was, like I said, it was pretty low key. Uh, we flew missions. I flew 265 good missions. And uh, Basically, the, the normal missions were pretty routine. The exciting missions were when we had troops in contact, when the bad guys were approaching our guys, that's when you would hang it out for them. But the rest of the time, it was pretty low key. How did your mom handle the fact you were going into the military? <laughs> I know you talked about it before. <laughs> My mom uh, didn't really want to talk about it. And... Uh, the only thing I could convince her was that there were some idiots going around who would call your family. They would read in the newspaper that you were in Vietnam. And just because they were bored, they would call your house and say, hey, your kid got killed today. Hmm. So that was the only thing she listened to. I told her if anybody came and told her that, just to ignore them. And when they did come to tell her that I was missing, 
she was very stoic and said, that's nice. Thanks. And closed the door. <laughs> That's right. I remember. I remember you saying. So your mom was told you're you've been shot down, and she's like, "Okay, thanks," and just closed the door. Yeah, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And I told her if I didn't write her for a week, then she could call him back and listen to them. So that was what she did. And you were in the prison camp, the Hanoi Hilton, for a year, approximately. Oh, nine months. Just nine months. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, I'd like to say thank you to you, to uh, Mrs. Capillaire, to Valerie, to uh, uh, to Delia, her brother Armando, and all the other veterans that have made our our country free. And we wouldn't be here without you guys. So thank you. Uh, there, are there any other comments that anybody would like to make uh, before we sign off? Anybody? I know I've got a couple more comments in the feed. Um, I'm just going to uh, read them. So I want one says, I want to thank uh, you for sharing your daughter's story. I'm happy other happy other kids will be able to hear and appreciate the way she served her country. I can say that she is an inspiration to everyone here. Um, I have a student that says I have an uncle who is a veteran and he has very bad PTSD. I always thank him for what he has done because I can see how brave he had to be and how much he got, he, he was put through. I can only imagine how hard your daughter worked. She was very strong and inspiring. Another student says, I am sorry for your loss, but by the looks of her history, you read to us was, she was from a lovely family and a loving mother. And she looked happy that she achieved her dream of being a Navy pilot. If she was there with you, she would have been happy and would want you and her sisters to be happy as well. Uh, some say, thank you for your service. Um, I, and others says, I would like to thank veterans and their families for the sacrifices and service. So thank you. There you go. I attend Shadow Ridge School, the best indie in the HD. You know my name. You know my name.